In this video, you're going to learn how to write a Docker file. Then you're going to learn how to build an image from that Docker file. And then finally, we're going to do an end-to-end -end example where we write a Java application, put it inside a Docker image, and then run it as a container. A Docker file describes what is packaged into your image and also how to run it as a container. It sets up the initial state for when you start your container. The first thing you're nearly always going to do is define the base image and we use the from command for that. More often than not, that's going to be an official operating system image, something like Debian or Ubuntu. In this course, we're nearly always going to use OpenJDK base images. They're mainly based on Debian, but there's also ones based on Alpine Linux. We're going to go into that in a lot of detail in the building production images section. Once we have an operating system, then we need to add things into our Docker image. In this example, all we're doing is adding one class called hello.class, and we're going to put it in the root of the image. Typically, we wouldn't put it there, but for the hello world example, that's where we'll put it. And then finally, we set up a command, that's the CMD. And that is the default that com command that will be executed when someone runs this image as a container. This can be overridden at the command line for when we run it. That's our hello world Docker file. But let's see what else is going to be, we're going to see inside Docker files in this course. The first is run. So run will execute a command during build time. Here, the command is just echoing hello. But typically, these are going to be things like installing operating system packages that aren't in your base image. Copy is a lot like add that we used in the previous example, except copy can only take things from the local file system, from the, lo from the local Docker context, and put them inside our image. The add command is more powerful and it can do things like get things from the internet and, and archive things. Entry point is often used in conjunction with command is for when we're going to have an executable container and more often than not the ones we build will be executable. If you specify both entry point and command then the things in command will be passed into entry point. So in this example we could create a docker image with an entry point of Java and then we could set the command to be hello. And that allows users, when they override the command, to not have to enter Java. They just have to enter the class that was going to be executed. Before we move on, let's just make sure we understand the difference between a Docker image and a Docker file. A Docker file is just a text file. It will be checked into version control, possibly along with our code, and it describes how to package our image. Whereas the image is much more like the jar file of the Docker world, we'll be building that and then pushing it into a registry with, with a version. The next bit of terminology we need to make sure we can understand and how it differs from images is the container. So the container is a running instance of an image. A bit like in Java, we have a class and then we can have many instances of that class. In Docker, we have an image and then we can have many containers that run from that image. The same image can be run many times on a single host or even across lots of slots of servers, say when you want to scale your application. So we're about to jump into a demo and see all of this in practice. But first, let's just go through some popular Docker commands. You can use this as a cheat sheet when you're doing this, uh, when you're doing this yourself. So to build an image, we're going to use the docker build command. If we do docker build period, like we have at the top command here, then it assumes that the Docker file and all of the files that we might need to copy in, into that image are in the current directory. Once we've built an image, or if we've pulled images from the internet or from other registries, we can list those with Docker images. Then we have three variations of Docker run. The first and the simplest is just Docker run and followed by the image name. This will run the Docker container in the foreground. So when we type this into our shell, It'll block the current shell and the output of that container will come out at a standard out of the shell. More useful is to, run, is to run containers in the background. So for that, we use the minus D option and it stands for detach. And then finally, if we already have a running container and we want to execute a command in that container and we want to open it, which, which opens an interactive shell, then we use docker run minus IT. So we'll be doing this in an example soon. And if you want to execute a bash shell inside a container, you'd use this command. Finally, we've got Docker PS, and that will list the current containers. So when you first install Docker, that should return nothing. But then when we start to run our containers, which we're about to do, we'll be able to see the running ones and inspect them. So hopefully you now have a good grasp of what a Docker image is and what a Docker container is. 
but for me, seeing is believing. So let's demo a Hello World Java application, compile it, put it inside a Docker image, and then run it as a container. So the first thing we're going to do is define a Java class. It's going to be a very simple one. It's just going to be called Hello. Uh, the only thing it's going to do is print a small message. So let's quickly define that. So now we're just going to make sure it works. So we're going to compile it with Java and we're going to run it. And it should print hello from Docker. And it does. Of course, we know that's a lie. There's no Docker yet. So let's create ourselves a Docker file. So we're going to base our Docker image from the OpenJDK Java 11 image. That's called 11JRE Slim. We're then going to add our class to it because this Docker image isn't going to have the contents of our local machine. So we need to explicitly add the hello.class. And then finally, we need to define the command. And all we're going to do is run Java and we're going to pass in hello to run the hello class. So that's it for the Docker file. Next, we need to actually build it. So we've got a Docker file. And what do we do with Docker files? We build Docker images. So we just run Docker builds. We pass in a name with the minus T and it builds very quickly because I've already got the uh, OpenJDK image downloaded. Maybe yours will take a bit longer. We're just going to run Docker images and pipe it to head so we can just see the latest image. And we can see it's there, hello world, and it's 204 megabytes. So next is to run it. We just run docker run, and then finally we've got hello from docker. So if you're new to docker there, if you're new to docker, a lot has just happened. We've defined a Java class, we've compiled it, we've created a docker image um, from it, and then we've run it. And it's executed and then it's ended because we just run Java and all we did was print something and then the JVM ended, which means the Docker container is going to end. Let's try and simulate something a bit more like a production application, which would keep running for quite a long time. So to do that, we're gonna order our file and we're gonna have it stick around for a while. So we're just gonna put in a thread.sleep. Thread.sleep takes in milliseconds, so for 10 seconds, we need to put in 10,000. And then to let us know that the JVM is about to exit and our container is about to exit, we can print out goodbye. Once we've done that, we can recompile it and we can rebuild an image. And uh, this time maybe we'll give it a different name so we can run either one later. So we'll call this one long hello world and then we'll run Docker run again. Now we're gonna need a little bit of patience this time because because we run this container in the foreground in the current shell, then it's going to sleep for 10 seconds and it's going to block us. So wait for a few more seconds and then it's going to print goodbye and then we're done. So remember the other command that we, we learned in the presentation was to run the container in the background. And to do that, we do minus D and then it just fires off the container in the background. But let's first give it, before we run that actually, let's first give it a name because what we want to do is to be able to lock up this container as it's running. So we get back the container ID, so that's a big hash, and then we run docker ps, and then we can see our container. A useful command is also docker logs, so we can see the, the logs of our container, because they're no longer coming out to the console because we're running the container in the background. And there we have it, we run docker logs a few, time, a few times, and then eventually saw goodbye, which we know means the JVM exits, which means the container is exited, which means when we run Docker PS again, our container is no longer running. That's all we've got time for in this video. Next up, we're gonna go through some installation instructions for how to get Docker running so you can follow along with the samples and then a few quick steps to validate your install. See you in the next video.